Hi everyone, this is May Park. Welcome to another video tutorial on my blog and YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create a floral themed card using all to new Sweeties P stamp set and Prisma color colored pencils. This video also shows how to use a big alphabet die to add dimension and interest on your project using the die cut inlay technique. Of course, I will share the behind the scenes video at the end to show you my messy desk after my project is done. This video is part of the Daily Marker 30 Day Coloring Challenge Blog Hub. To celebrate Katie's 10th coloring challenge, I'm giving away a $30 gift certificate to the Altoon online store. So make sure to check out my blog for more details and leave a comment on my blog card post for a chance to win. When I'm not sure what to create, I tend to look at my old cards to get some inspiration. I shared these two cards a couple of days ago for the Alto New Release Block Hub. I love their new Mega Alphabet dies, so I use them for the die cut inlay technique. And I created this floral card last month for Studio Kaisha's second anniversary block hub. After I stamped the floral bouquet image on the green cardstock, I colored the images with the Prisma colored pencils and hit embossed the outline with gold embossing powder. So for today's project, I'm going to combine those two techniques, die cut inlay technique and colored pencil coloring. I'm going to pull out Honey Mustard cardstock from Gina K Autumn Rainbow Pack. Actually, I wasn't sure if the color of this cardstock would be good as a base for colored pencil coloring, but I decided to give it a try. I'm cutting my cardstock into 4 inch by 5.5 inches using my Timur's paper trimmer. This paper trimmer is one of my favorite paper crafting tools. Then I'm going to place my panel inside my original Misty stamping tool and hold the paper in place with magnet corners. I'm placing my Mega Alphabet S die on my panel temporarily to help me find the placement of my floral images. I'm going to pull out stamps from the Sweetest Pea stamp set. This set features several Sweet Pea flowers drawing in a beautiful deep pen and ink style. Once I'm happy with the placement of my stamps, I'm going to close the misty door to pick up the stamps. I'm inking up my stamps with the Simon Says Stamp Khaki Ink and close the misty door to stamp the images on my panel. Actually, I was going to heat emboss my images after coloring, so I didn't care about the ink color when I stamped. But I'm glad I chose the similar color with my cardstock as I ended up creating my card without heat embossing. Today I'm using my Misty tool for stamping as it helps me stamp images in the perfect placement where I want. It also allows me to stamp several images at once to save my time. If you don't have this Misty stamping tool, you could use a regular acrylic block or stamp press for stamping. I'm going to repeat the same process until I complete my entire panel with sweet pea flowers. Here is my stamped panel finished. If you want to keep the look of tone and tone background, I think you can stamp one of the flower images from the set, color it with any coloring medium, and mount it on the front panel with a 3M foam tape after die cutting the image. But I'm going to color my background with my Prisma colored pencils as I planned in the beginning. You only need two or three shades of colored pencils for each color. So I'll be using six different colored pencils in total to complete my coloring. I'll add a list of colored pencils in the description box below and my blog post in case you want to know which colored pencils I use for my coloring. Before I color the images on the stamped panel directly, I'm testing out my colors on the same colored cardstock by scribbling my colored pencils. That way, I can see if the colors I choose would go with the color of my panel. I'm going to start coloring with the darkest color first toward the bottom of my flower and along the outline of my flower petal. Then I'm going to apply medium color near the previous colored area and toward the end of my petal. I'm finishing off by coloring the tip of my first petal 
with a lighter pencil. Please note that I'm overlapping colors between each application so I can get a smooth transition between two colors. I'm also moving my pencil in small circles to get an even blended look and not to leave any harsh lines. You can always come back to light and medium colors to blend the colors together if needed. Or you can outline the petals with a darker color to enhance your image. And please make sure to have your pencil sharpened between each application. It will allow you to add more layers to your images, especially when you open small areas. I'm coloring my flowers with a traditional color combo, red and green. But you could choose any other colors to achieve an unexpected look of your image. Just make sure to choose some bright and vibrant colors so your images can pop against the colored cardstock. I'm placing a post note underneath my right hand because I don't want to pick up some color from the pencil crumbs and transfer them to my background. My friend Kathy Rakusin and Yana Smakla are good at colored pencil coloring. I'll add a couple of links to their coloring video tutorials in the description box below, so be sure to watch the videos and subscribe to their YouTube channels if you haven't done it yet. Now I'm going to turn on some music and speed up the coloring process. I'll be back once I'm done coloring. My coloring is almost done. As I already told you in the beginning, I was going to hit embossed outline images with a gold embossing powder. But I kind of like the color of node line coloring. So I decided to leave it as is without hit embossing. Instead, I'm adding some shades and details using a brown colored pencil. Especially, I add more shading where the petals are folded. I learned this tip from Kathy Rakusin. I strongly recommend you give it a try as it makes a big difference. You can create the dimension and depth on your images without many efforts. To bring my images together, I'm going to add tiny dots to fill in the gaps between each image. I'm using the fine tip from all to new artist marker paperback. This dot technique is one of my favorite card making techniques. It's fun and easy, but you can create a fun background in no time. Once my background is done, I'm going to die cut the letter using the Mega Alphabet S die out of my colored panel. I'm using my T scale ruler to place my alphabet die in the center. I'm going to place my Mega Alphabet S die in my colored panel between cutting plates. I also placed a piece of print paper over my colored panel to prevent from picking up any dirt from my cutting plate. Then I'm running them through my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. 
I'm mounting my colored panel on the A2 size white top folding cut base using all tuning glue tape. Then I'm going to die cut another Mega Alphabet S out of white foam foam. If you don't have a white foam foam, you can die cut several letters out of white cardstock and stack them together to make the letter thick. I'll be coloring along the side of my foam foam letter die cut using a brush tip of Altoon Artist Marker Caramel Toffee to match the color with my stamped panel. After attaching two die cut letters using Altoon glue tape, I'm going to inlay my letter die cut on the opening of my panel to add dimension. Now it's time to open my sentiment. I'm pulling out some of the sentiment banners from the container full of my sentiment leftovers. Then I placed each of the sentiments temporarily over my card front to decide types of font, size, and color of my sentiment. I think I like the gold hidden boss sentiment on the white card stock. I'm going to pull out sentiment stamps from various stamp sets. While the supplies are out on my desk, I just want to make extra sentiment banners. I'm prepping a piece of white cardstock with anti-static powder bag to remove any moisture, static, and oils. This step helps prevent any stray powder from sticking to unwanted areas. I'm going to ink up my sentiment stamps with Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink and stamp them on the paper. While the ink is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle some Altenew Rose Gold Embossing Powder of the sentiments and tap the excess powder off my paper. I'm using my dry paintbrush and piercing tool to flick away any stray powder. I'm going to preheat my embossing gun for about 10 seconds until it reaches its maximum temperature. Then I heat set my sentiments with heat tool until they are completely melted. Next, I'm going to trim my sentiment into a thin banner using craft knife and ruler. Then I'll be mounting the sentiment banner on the cut front using 3M foam tape to give some dimension. I ended up using the sentiment from all to new Adore Your Stamp Set. I'm using my T-square ruler to place my sentiment banner in straight. To finish off my card, I'm stamping the sentiment inside my card using Simon Says Stamp Handwritten Love Stamp Set and on the back of my card using all to new Crafty Life Stamp Set. This is it for today. If you enjoyed my video, Please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And I'd love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any new videos from me. And don't forget to visit my blog to learn more about the Daily Marker 30-Day Coloring Challenge. I hope my video inspires you to color something today, even if it's only for 5 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye-bye!